A lot of people ask me why I sing at the beginning. <laughs> well, I sing at the beginning because it's boring if you don't. Oh, dog's barking. Oh, phone. Oh, oh, somebody's ringing the bell at the door. Vicky Tori is here to handle it, though. What's up, everybody? It's Friday. How you doing? How you feeling? How you feeling? How you doing? I don't know what this camera's doing. It's doing something weird. Let's adjust the camera a little bit, you guys. There we go. Oh, uh, is it? Okay, there we go. All right. What's up, everybody? It's Friday. How you doing? Good to see you. Thanks for coming out, internet. Thanks for coming all the way out to the internet from wherever you're at. And coming in hot and fresh. First to the chat today, Mr. Dougie himself, a.k.a. Bald and Dangerous. What's up, my buddy? Loving that. Loving this Friday. We got some beautiful, we got some beautiful weather out there. Uh, we got some beautiful weather going on, and uh, hey, that's always good, right? Uh, it's always good to have a beautiful weather on a Friday. It's not too hot, not too cold, not too sunny, not too not sunny. I'm not really sure what not sunny is, but you know what I'm talking about. But let's say hi to Bald and Dangerous coming in first today, AJ's Aquarium, and Rocky's Rocky coming in third. Digging it, loving it. Love to see that. One, two, and three. Daryl Deemer is here. I apparently have been saying his name wrong forever. Uh, Daryl Deemer is here. Uh, Charlie is here. Good to see you, Charlie. Maxwell Sonneman coming in live. M. Howie 9. Mr. Pete Berlinski. What's up, Pete? How you doing? I have to, I have to say, let me, let me take a little sidebar here. I'm saying hi to people. Uh, to Mr. Hold on. Let me move the camera. Boom. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I was way too close. I was way too close, you guys. It was freaking me out. Um, but Mr. Pete Berlinski always does a great job to leave a comment on whatever I upload. Big thanks, man. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, that you go out of your way to drop a comment every single time, uh, every single time that I upload. Even if it's just like, hey, I like this. Thanks, Pete. Much appreciated. I appreciate the effort. Thanks, bro. Uh, Eisenclad is here. Eisenclad. It's the first time I've read that one out loud, I think. I see Gone Mad in the chat. I see Bentley Pascal. Bentley Pascal is probably getting ready for his crazy uh, commute home, which I'm sure is going to be loads of fun on a Friday like today. I see Dan Squires in the chat. Crystal Harrison. Heather Nielsen of Scarlet Aquatics. What's up? Good to see you. Steve Horton. Uh, KG Cichlids is in the house. Dropping the internet. Internoodles. Um, let's see. Who else do we got here? Kill Michael. Wait, where'd that go? Where? Oh, man. What happened to the chat? It went all crazy. Kill m Kill. Kill Michael. I don't know. how. I don't, hopefully I'm saying that right. Uh, Nick B is here. Mastera, Master Ellie, Master Ellie. Man, we got some people with some hard to pronounce names the first time I read them. Nick's Fish Room. Now that's easy to read. Core Boy, Corey Boy Aquatics, Hans Hartman, Wheezy. What's up, Wheezy? Good to see you. Uh, Paul Martin is here. <laughs> uh, Tony Franzen is here. Licks Nibbles. Good to see you. Uh, Candy Overhauls in the chat. I uh, hope Caleb's out there doing pretty good. I see your rumbust. I see Masterelli again. Okay, there we go. All right, Masterelli. Now I'm getting it. I'm getting it. Uh, MF 
MFI sci-fi. Let's say MFI fee. MFI fee. I don't know how to say that one. <laughs> Noob Fobo is here, running a little bit late. Not a big deal. BN Cooley is here. Scottish Aquatics. What's up, dude? Uh, Mary R N H two O. Uh, Danny Brown, Tank Tested. Oh, I see Tank Tested in the chat. If you guys haven't seen Tank Tested videos, mad props to my boy Alex. Loving it. Love all the, the stuff that he puts out. It's fantastic. It's like it's like a wizard. It's like somebody gave a camera to a wizard, and he does a fantastic job. Uh, if you haven't checked that out. Kyra Witt is here. Joel Gillett. John Bedker. Kevin Keener. All right, Devin Peppers. Oh, everybody's saying Hi. Uh, if I missed you, it's not on purpose. I didn't skip anybody over on purpose. I'm just, I'm just one guy. I'm just one guy with four eyes trying to read, just trying to read, but I never learned to read. I'm so sorry, you guys. I never did learn to read. Oh no. I'm so sorry. I tried, but just never set in. What's today's show about? People wondering what's today's show about because of the thumbnail that I made. Because the thumbnail that I made is literally just from some of the tours that I was on. I just had some of these images that were so pretty and I just had to make them into a, into a really bright and shiny Instagram style thumbnail. It just had to be done. That... Uh, and to give full credit, the tank itself is actually Tom Barr's tank. Um, and the fish is actually Scottish Aquatics fish. I took a picture of that lovely rainbow fish. Uh, as people were wondering if I'd gotten rainbow fish in. and No, I don't have any rainbow fish in. Uh, Swishimi Whiskey is handling the rainbow fish. And by the way, his 125 is looking baller. I was looking at it yesterday. And uh, looking fantastic. Uh, in lighter news, there was uh, there were some brush, a bunch of brambles and brush and things that needed to be chopped down at my homie Corey's house. And uh, so I went up to do that yesterday. If you don't know who Corey is from the aquarium co-op, that's who I'm talking about. Uh, so I went up there to help out with that, mainly because I got chainsaws, I got all that stuff. And I was like, you know what, let's go do this. I love cutting down brush anyhow. So we went up there. Now, a really cool part of uh, what happened yesterday is uh, yours truly right here, this guy, managed to find a bunch of feral kittens, you guys. Feral kittens. Oh, two of them just came, like I went and like pulled a big brush pile away because I was hearing some weird mews and sounds and things, and I was like, something's in there. I went and pulled back the brush, and two little kittens popped out. And I was like, uh, I was pretty, I was like, oh my gosh, what's with these kittens? These are little baby kittens. These little tiny, tiny kittens. Oh my God. So I saved those two. It turned out there was more kittens, you guys. Um, and if you guys want to check out um, the real Dorkula um, Instagram, uh, Corey's wife. She took some pictures of the kittens and stuff and posted them up on Instagram. So you guys can take a look at them. Uh, I never, I think I took some pictures of my cell phone and I, I never transferred anything to anywhere other than my cell phone. So I could be like, hey, check it out. It's on my phone. That would be silly. But uh, she did a great job. Um, you know, she got the, uh, the kitten formula. So we made kitten milk and then she fed them and everything it was super awesome. It turns out. There was four, there was five altogether. One of them, I have no idea what happened, was just, when I uncovered it, one of them was deceased. Kind of sucks, I, I, but it didn't have any, like, obvious trauma or anything like that, so I'm not sure what happened. I don't know, maybe got scared to death or something. I, I'm not 100%. I'm no veterinarian, you guys, and um, I certainly didn't do an autopsy, but uh, that cat is going to be buried it's going to be a funeral for that kitty cat. And it was sad. But the other four are doing fantastically. They got uh, they got delivered to the uh, no-kill shelter where they will be taken care of. Uh, they will be taken care of. And um, 
they will get adopted out to somebody. And I do have to admit, you guys, the little boy one, just head to toe white as snow, okay? Um, and then one of them was really white with, like, gray ears and gray paws. And, but pure white cat with bright blue eyes, like the brightest blue you've ever seen. And I've seen the father, I think, running amok in the area around there. And he has big, big, bright blue eyes. And um, I was definitely, uh, you know, I was kind of smitten for a kitten. And I really wanted to get that one. But I realized I just, I have way too much going on on my plate right now. i got a baby on the way. I've got a ton of fish tanks. I've got all this crazy stuff to do. And I can't deal with like a four week, five week old kitten right now because I'd have to bottle feed for, you know, like three more weeks, four weeks or something like that. And uh, but I definitely did want that kitten. Uh, I wanted that one for sure. It's like the exact opposite of the cat that I used to have. I used to have a cat that was all black and had yellow eyes and uh, it was named Shadow. And it was pretty evil. <laughs> the kind of I. We always joke that it's like we ended up with like a witch's cat because this thing, it would come back with seagulls. You know what I mean? Like it would come back with large birds that had done cat stuff too. Um, so, you know, I was just like, I just have too much on my plate right now. I can't take care of this little kitten properly and I'd probably end up raising it wrong and it'd be doing a bunch of dumb stuff. So I figured it'd be better for another family out there. But somebody is definitely going to be able to adopt some of what I would consider wildly expensive cats. Like those are those are like they're like white Siamese or some kind of I don't even know. I don't even know what kind of cat it is. The only time I've ever seen those, I, I don't know what type it is. I think it's like a white Siamese or something. I don't know. But every time I've seen that, like kittens for sale. Uh, or something like that. Those ones were always super expensive, like twelve hundred dollars or something. So somebody's going to be able to adopt like a like a hundred dollars adoption fee, whatever the adoption fee is up up there. I'm not sure. Uh, somebody's going to be able to adopt what what I think would be considered a really expensive cat for very cheap. So all in all, I think everyone's going to win. Savannah, the Aqua Llama has 11 cats. <laughs> oh, man. Savannah, I'm not saying that's too many cats, but that might be too many cats. You've gone into double digits with the cats. <laughs> You're supposed to balance them out with dogs. You're supposed to have like five dogs and five cats or something. I don't know. I'm just giving you a hard time. That's a lot of cats. I don't know what I would do. Um... I don't know what I would do with that many cats. I'd, we have like basically that many chickens. <laughs> and I don't know. We don't know what to do with them. Uh, but uh, speaking of the chickens, somebody was asking if we still have chickens. Yes, we still have chickens. Uh, one was murdered. Uh, one one died of... Um, one got sick and died. Uh, so we're down to nine. So we have nine instead of 11 now. Uh, and uh, we've been going through the treatment process and stuff like that, and um, they've been—they're doing pretty well at this point. But um, uh, yeah, we'll we'll be updating that fairly soon to be letting people know uh, what's up with uh, with those chickens and uh, the treatment stuff that we were doing. Matt Sorelli dropping the five dollar super chat, saying you're a good dude. Here's some help. Keep up the awesomeness. Oh, well, thanks, man. Uh, it's for people like you and people like on the Patreon and stuff that were able to actually do this show and uh, pop on and and uh, occupy some of the day and stuff like that. I'd almost considered doing a, a weekend stream instead of this Friday stream because it is like it's getting really busy summer summer style around here. But um, <clears throat> the um, but then I realized like, ah, no, I think I'll just do the regular Friday uh, I know you guys like the weekend streams, but it's just, it's so hard to like try and fit one in on, on the weekend. And also like such short notice always kind of sucks when you're like, oh yeah, never mind. We're doing Saturday, you know, <laughs> that would just be uh, terrible. But 
everything seems is uh, is going well and thanks to you guys we're able to uh keep the show rolling and uh hopefully we just keep the community growing and and things are going really well so um one of the main things that we do on fridays is answer the patreon questions i think i actually do even have a video today too but of course the preview on XSplit is not working. Let's see what happens when we go over to this one. Nothing's happening. What is that? What is it doing? <gasps> oh my gosh, there is a video here. Huh. <sighs> it just was being weird. Okay, well, there we go. I don't know. I guess we've gone to the video. Oh my gosh. Uh, just walked around and shot some terrible video. I'm sorry, you guys. It's all shaky and weird, and I've got glare in it and all that kind of stuff. I uh, just wanted to walk around and give you guys a quick update on um, some of the fish tanks. I uh, spent a lot of time today uh, doing production on some videos for this weekend. Um, uh, I'm building a, I built a new CO2 reactor. You guys will be able to check that out, um, a surges style CO2 reactor. And then hopefully I'll have a, a, a somebody's aquarium uh, room tour, uh, hopefully on Sunday. We'll see if I can get all the edits done and all that. Um, but today's video is just kind of the updates on some of the plants that we planted during the week and last week, um, just to kind of show you guys a little bit of an update on what's going on and uh, keep you guys appraised of, uh, of the situation, of what's happening. Uh, I think one thing that people notice today that on the, uh, the community tab that pops up if you are subscribing and you have your notifications turned on and stuff, uh, they, uh, uh, I was asking today... Uh, and I asked it in the Patreon also, but I want to actually pull open my, my community tab and um, see what, what the vote is at. But the vote, I put up a poll to vote for what to do with the new 120 because I got a brand new 120 sitting uh, in the garage. It's getting ready to be set up, and I really wanted to know what people were thinking, uh, what you're more excited to see happen. So far... We've got 223 votes. Here it is on my screen right here. And 75% say freshwater over reef instead of reef. Um, we do have a lot of um, have a lot of people asking about a black water tank, which to be brutally honest with you guys, the 240 is so close to a um, uh, the the 240 is so close to a black water tank with the taking care of the tetras and everything that is in there. I'm not saying it's exactly a black water tank, but um, you know when I add in my leaf litter and stuff like that, I uh, it is pretty close with the pH and everything like that. It basically is a black water tank. It's really not that far off. It's just a lot clearer than it just doesn't have the deep tannins that are uh, that are coloring it up. Uh, but I also wanted to check with the, the Patreon poll. Um, we've got 49 votes over there, which, uh, honestly, it's coming from a smaller group of people. We're, there's a 322 people on the Patreon, so uh, to get 50 of you voting, that's pretty good. And um, so far, the, the Freshwater is winning on that poll also. Now, my main reasoning behind this was that I've got kind of two options right now in my head of what I can or can't do. Um, and one of them would be to be able to build out the 120 into a freshwater tank and um, and then uh, possibly just go credit card style. And just uh, I figured I'd just go credit card style and just charge another tank. <laughs> Which I know most people would say that's a bad idea. Um, and, you know, you might be right. You might be wrong. I don't know. But um, I'm, I'm definitely just considering the idea of just charging another um, uh, another uh, another matching 120 uh, onto the credit card and then figuring out which, which uh, kidney or liver I got to sell uh, to pay back the credit card people. But um, that's kind of what I'm considering because I have that 60 gallon cube and I'm thinking I might want to do the 60 gallon cube as the reef. Not, not to say that a 120 gallon reef is not awesome. I think it would be awesome. Uh, but the maintenance schedule that I'm running into right now with the 180 gallon reef is, um, a little bit overwhelming because the, uh, just the volume of everything I have to deal with, you know, when I do water changes for it. Um, I do about a 70 gallon water change, which means I have to mix two different 
two different cans of water um, and a lot of that stuff. Whereas with the 60 gallon, I would actually cut everything in half um, because I could just do 30 gallon water changes about every two to three weeks on the reef. Um, and plus, I'm not afraid to really like mess around with a 60 gallon um, because it's not like a wild investment of money type tank. Um, I basically traded for it. Um, so I'm basically out no money and it is a used older tank. So if I do kind of mess around in it a little bit, kind of mess it up a little bit, I'm not going to be super concerned about it. Whereas the 120, I might be super upset if, you know, a rock falls over and scratches the tank or something like that. It would be like, oh my God, you know, um, so that's kind of my thought process behind it. <clears throat> just kind of wanted to share that with you guys. Maybe that I hope it doesn't like affect your voting or anything like that. I'm seeing that there's a lot of people excited about the reef, which it does have to move to a new tank. It is 100% moving to a new tank. Hopefully, um, hopefully I have a buyer that's going to buy the 180 that it's in right now. Um, and it will be moving out of that tank because that wall has to get cleared up. Uh, cause I have to pull, <clears throat> I don't have to pull the drywall, but I do have to add a bunch of plumbing and stuff into that wall to get prepared for, uh, for the pond that is going that is going in on the property here fairly soon uh so i'm going to have to do that it is going to happen and i'm going to have to move it to a tank so i'm thinking that um the 60 gallon cube might be the best um contender for that um because it would realistically put me in a position where i wouldn't have to uh dedicate a whole bunch of time to the maintenance plus it would also give me a good reason to you know, take the tang out, um, rehome the tang, get them adopted, uh, the pajama cardinals and stuff and get them, uh, get them rehomed because the, the 60 gallon would be too small for them. The 120, I would be tempted to keep the, uh, the blue tang, the Nassau tang that's in there. Um, because I might be like, oh, well, it's okay. Uh, even though it's not exactly, um, the best thing to do. Leslie, uh, Leslie's Fish Room is asking, is it possible to convert a saltwater tank to fresh? If so, how would you go about doing that? Um, yes, you can definitely do that. You can definitely convert a saltwater tank to a freshwater tank. That's really, um, it's really simple, actually. All, all you have to do is just break it down, um, clean, lightly clean it with a little bit of vinegar and rinse it out, and you're pretty much ready to go. Uh, almost all bacteria and everything like that aren't going to be transferable from a from a reef tank to a freshwater tank and vice versa mainly because of the extreme salinity um the extreme salinity content is uh would really throw things out of whack so um like nothing can really survive that extreme change if something has um if if something has um you know, if something has adapted to grow in full salt, if you put it into fresh water, it's just not going to make it. Um, it's just not, it's just not the right environment for it. Um, and it won't make it. <clears throat> so that's actually not that big of a deal. You will have to change some of the equipment out. Uh, you wouldn't need a skimmer on a freshwater tank and stuff like that. But, um, any of the equipment that you are going to reuse, uh, pumps and any of that kind of stuff, it's actually pretty easy to, um, so with a pump, you'd actually just take it apart and dunk it into a, uh, so like if you're going salt water to fresh, you'd basically just want to dunk it in uh, of like a five gallon bucket with some warm water and a bunch of uh, white distilled vinegar in there to, uh, you know, break down some of the calcium and stuff like that, that has been on it. But the fresh water is mainly going to clean off all the salt and stuff too. So it's, it's pretty simple. Like you don't even need soap. You don't even need any kind of special scrubbers or anything like that. Um, it actually is just a matter of kind of labor, spraying it off, cleaning it off. And, uh, it, they really go both ways. Lots of my tanks. So this 150 right here, um, that is in the video right there is, um, actually used to be a reef tank. This actually was fully set up as a reef tank at one point in time. Uh, and I cleaned it and I, I don't know if I ever made a video of me cleaning it. I didn't, uh, it just didn't occur to me that people would have that question, but it does make sense that people would have that question though. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just a matter of like cleaning it up and just filling it up with fresh water and getting rocking and rolling. So, um, so that's, that's kind of what I'm considering right now at this point, um, is 
you know, and also I'm going to be building some new stands and stuff like that to kind of occupy the, the room in there. I finally convinced Vicky to just let me build them into the walls and, um, do it that route. So <laughs> it did take a minute, uh, take a year, a hot minute of a year, uh, to get her to just be cool with, uh, what I was, what my overall plan was in there. Um, and I'd be able to just get the 120 in, uh, and try to get everything situated properly and, and do the 60 gallon cube as the reef. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. Bonsai binge. Great show. Gotta go. Well, yeah, be sure to share and hit the like button and all that stuff. Right. Cause that's like super important to constantly talk about. Hit the share button, hit the like button and caress the tickle button or something i don't know tickle the smash button <laughs> um let's see alex alex netter nude netter nude <laughs> alex never nude uh is asking when getting into saltwater tanks is a 10 gallon a good idea or should i go bigger i already have uh four planted nano tanks so a small reef might be the next thing to try uh, personally, you can do a 10 gallon. That is for sure. Uh, but the recommendation that I would typically give to people would be to get a 20 long. A 20 long is sort of the perfect starter reef tank. Uh, if you are going to get into reefing and, uh, you know, doing saltwater, I'm saying reefing and now that sounds weird. Uh, but if you're getting into, um, saltwater tanks and stuff, um, I would say a 20 long is kind of the best bet. Uh, I personally would go with a 40 gallon breeder. That will really put you in a spot for success and help you keep your stability, um, help keep that tank stable and things like from temperature, salinity, evaporation, all that kind of stuff. Cause that's the biggest, the biggest concern that you have with a small, small reef tank is evaporation. Uh, because the, Actual H2O is what evaporates. Everything else is left behind um, when that happens. And what ends up happening is it will compound that small volume of water and create an overall unhealthy environment for uh, everything that is in there um, if you're not like kind of regularly monitoring it. And personally, a 20 gallon long is a lot easier to deal with. A 40 breeder is kind of the perfect starter. Um, I believe that Kevin Keener is going to be picking up the 75 gallon from me um, at some point in time once we get that broken down, which should be fairly soon. I was hoping to do it this weekend, but I ended up booking a job this weekend. So I'm going to be working all weekend uh, out there in the hot sun because it's going to get hot again uh, to try and basically be able to make more YouTube videos. <laughs> You know, like the more bills, the, the I can book jobs and then um, make enough money to be able to make more YouTube videos so that I don't end up making homeless guy videos. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so I booked, I booked a job this weekend, so I, I was really hoping to get that 75 broken down, but... It's looking like I might have to put it off uh, a little bit longer. Hopefully, I can get it done like in the middle of the week next week, and then it's really no stress to uh, it's no stress to pick it up. Let's see. James Well says, "Do a new world biotope so I can copy along with you <laughs> with my 120. Want to copy your sump? Okay, uh, I might. It, but it, uh, most of my tanks are pretty biotope ish. You know, I mean." The, I, I don't, I'm not super strict like Heiko Blair is or anything like that, but, um, I try to keep everything, you know, within the, within the realm of that it's kind of supposed to be there or could at least like, I don't have to adapt the water conditions to anything that's going in there. I normally only put stuff in that is going to be down with the water, with the, with the, uh, water conditions. Steve Horton's. Here asking, uh, so I was soaking some Mopani for a couple of hours and then boiled it for 45 minutes and now I'm soaking it again. Uh, yeah, Mopani does, um, Mopani does leach a lot of tannins, uh, for a long time. My, my best advice with Mopani would, would just be to get in, get it in a tank and just let the tannins slowly leach out. Um, you'll kind of, you kind of dr drive yourself crazy 
boiling it and putting it into new buckets and all that kind of stuff. Whereas, you know, the tannins aren't going to hurt your fish. They aren't going to hurt the plants. They aren't going to hurt anything in there um, that's going on, realistically. Uh, Flip Aquatic says, do a huge Taiwan bee tank. Uh, I could probably do a Taiwan bee at some point, bee tank at, at some point. Um, I would just have to get the Taiwan bees from somewhere, uh, which means I probably have to fly to Europe or something to get them. I might have to do that. Yeah, I'll probably do a big uh, Taiwan bee tank. That's what the uh, 150 is actually going to be for. Right now, it just has the cherry shrimp in it just to keep it alive, basically, and, and uh, you know, keep shrimp in my life. Most of them will be moving to the 240 uh, as time goes on, but they breed so fast, they just end up with more <laughs> in the tank, uh, even though I've been netting them out and, and moving them to the 240. The 240 has a huge colony now, too. <laughs> They're just in there. Um, I saw... I dumped a bunch in there. Um, I dumped a bunch in there the other day, and um, a rummy nose tetra got a baby one. And I mean, realistically, like I don't like anything to be eaten by anything, but that's kind of what's supposed to happen in nature. And uh, and uh, so I was like, well, I guess really, if it's gonna die, that's really the way to do it. But that's how many um, that's so many cherry shrimp I have at this point. I was just kind of like, yeah, all right. That's just happened. Like, whatever. Um, it's just getting to the point where I just have tons and tons. Um, I, you know, just tons and tons at some point. You know, just at this point, there's just so many cherry shrimp. It's getting kind of out of hand. I'm probably going to start dropping some off or maybe uh, sell some to some people or whatever. I know, um, who was it? Um, I can't remember their name. It's probably coming up pretty soon that I could be able to maybe send some out. But it's been so hot that um because who was it was it adrian i can't remember if it was adrian or not that uh oh man i have two emails to get back if i haven't returned your email i'm very sorry that's not on purpose <laughs> i didn't realize that i think i read it from my phone like i i can't return emails from my phone because i have too much uh I have too much malware and spamware and all that stuff like on my email accounts that it won't let my phone email anybody back, <laughs> which seems like a bad deal. It is kind of a bad deal. It leads to me like forgetting to email people back sometimes, but uh, I haven't really been here very much in the mornings. I've been out working uh, in the mornings and stuff, and that's normally when I get back to people. And uh, so that's probably the main reason. Uh, Tony Franzen says, never boiled it either. Just put it in the tank, and with the time, it will leach less tannins. Yeah, the Mopani wood, uh, it'll leach less over time for sure. And, um, yeah, just keep just keep rolling with it in the tank. I, I never found a big benefit to, like, boiling it or soaking it or any of that kind of stuff, mainly because you're pretty much just soaking it in the tank, right? So it's going to be doing whatever you're soaking it, like, in a trash can or something. Uh, Athena's Home Aquatics is asking, what kind of lights do you use on your tanks? I have a current Pro Plus for my Planted 120, and it just isn't giving me the results I was hoping for. Um, I dose Ferts and inject CO2. Yeah, so I've, uh, I've, I have mentioned this a few times to people. Um, oh, where'd it go? Well, either way, I can give you this one. Um, that'll, that'll take you to the Aquarium Co-op. That's where I got the Fluval 3.0 lights um this on this tank right here is actually the 2.0 uh but i have it set i have my other th my other th so the fluval 3.0 i have it set to exactly what the 2.0 does um because i have like i have like four of the 2.0 lights and um i only have two of the 3.0 so i basically like just need to make the 3.0s like the other ones or just adjust the 3.0s a little bit. Uh, but I do have the Fluval LEDs. They basically are um, pretty much the way to go. Um, with um, They're pretty much the way to go as far as um, LED lights, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, there are way more expensive ones out there. Um, there are cheaper ones out there. 
they're pretty much just kind of the best ones best ones to go with at this point they are um they're basically waterproof they have a warranty for three years the 3.0s are adjustable from your phone you can just get you just download the free app uh load in load in the free app and then your gangbusters you're ready to go i have one of those on the 150 the 150 gallon has one light on it for a 48 inch aquarium and i can grow dark red plants i can grow bucafe alondra anubius uh sterogene repens whatever it is you want to grow you can grow with those lights it works fine uh there are some cheaper alternatives out there um the ones that are vetted i always forget but basically i would put your trust in Corey from aquarium co-op there's three other light fixtures on there i forget exactly which ones they are one's a finex i think maybe one's a beams work or something like that don't quote me but um those are the ones that basically he's like run over with his car um thrown into the river testing them out to see if they work and stuff and uh, he finds them to be reliable and stuff so uh, I don't own any of those ones, so I can't really give you a great um, review, per se, of, like, any of those. And, um, um, uh, so I can't really give you any reviews on those because they... Um, <clears throat> They, uh, what's the word? I, I just have, have never had like prolonged experience with them. I did have some Phoenix, um, the Stingrays and a couple other Phoenix lights. I didn't like them. A couple of them broke. That was just me. Um, I've had, um, a bunch of Beams Works lights. A bunch of them broke. A bunch of them had issues. And I didn't like them. Um, I've used landscape lighting. I've made GU10 LEDs. I've made my own build your own LED, um, soldered them together. I've done all that kind of stuff. And to be brutally honest with you, <clears throat> after spending all that time and money and everything on that, um, there was no warranty. There's no guarantee. Um, they didn't necessarily work better or worse. Maybe they worked exactly the same, uh, but they certainly weren't waterproof. I'll tell you that much. So just, that's just the way I look at it. You know, Fluval really is, um, you know, they really do warranty their stuff. They really do guarantee that you have a quality product. If you have an issue, they can follow up with stuff. And I just, as far as these lights go, I trust them. As far as the Fluval Stratum goes, I trust them. As far as anything else goes, I don't know. Some people would say I'm kind of a shill, but I'm just saying these are the two things. I use a lot of theirs, of, the, of those product line, and I trust them. They work great. And, uh, you know, it's like... Like the Fluval bug bites, I don't know. I've thrown some in my tank and the fish ate them and stuff, but I don't know any long-term stuff because that's not necessarily, that's not like what I feed on a regular basis. So um, none of that stuff is, is all that important. Um, I'm just saying these are the two items that I definitely get from Fluval. And I happen to buy them from Corey. You can buy them from him if you like, or you can buy them from wherever. Maybe you find an Amazon deal. Go for it. If you do find an Amazon deal, post it in the chat so we all know about it too because if somebody's selling something under the the cost like i try to let you guys know as much as i can whenever i can uh i try to let you guys know about that stuff too because hey man if somebody's selling something cheaper than it costs to even buy it wholesale or something i'm definitely in i'm down for that we as a matter of fact we found the the giant bottle of safe on accident the other day during the show uh and i ordered one myself because i was like whoa $26 for the giant jug of safe. <laughs> it's like, what? That's cray cray. And so I ordered one. I don't know. Did you guys order one? I ordered one for sure. It's like 400,000 gallons or 800,000. What is it? It treats 800,000 gallons of water. Of which obviously you couldn't really do in one sitting because you'd have to try and get it to spin around in there within like, what is it? Nine minutes or something like that. Uh, but you know, if I'm doing a little bit by little bit, that's going to last me a really long time. Like I said, I don't even measure Seachem safe the other day. And the other day I was watching, uh, like a steam five video came on and he does what I do. He just like dumps it in there. Like, a, <laughs> like, a, like it's a salt shaker. Like I just don't even measure it because you know, it's just kind of a waste of time to even measure it at those prices. It's like, eh, 
whatever. It's going to cost me more money to walk around and go find an eighth of a teaspoon, which who knows? It's going to be crazy. Uh, Daniel's Fishkeeping says, I am a foster carer. We had a first birthday yesterday. It was a touching day. Hey, congrats. Congrats on the first the first birthday for the foster kids. I like that. Nice work. Um, I appreciate people that do foster care, man. That that is a that is a huge thing, and very important. Very important to uh, do that foster care. And, and mad props, Daniel, for you doing that. I think I missed a super chat. I think I was yammering on about nonsense and missed a super chat. And in fact, I did. Nick B with the Chuck Norris avatar. <laughs> I like it. It's the old school. He's got the he's got the drape in the back. I like it. <laughs> nice mullet, Norris. Uh, looking to transfer my planted 10-gallon tank into a 20 long. What's the best way to do it? Uh, I have guppies, neon tetras, sponge filter, and stratum as a substrate. Um, so the 10-gallon uh, into a 20, I would order some extra substrate. The 20 long is uh, a lot more of a footprint than you're probably expecting, uh, even though it's just like, oh, it's only twice the water. Um, there's a lot more floor space in there than you're thinking. Might be a good idea, you know what I mean? <clears throat> the uh, And then how to transfer, um, I basically would just drain the water into two five-gallon buckets. Uh, whatever is left over, just dump down the drain. Um, and I would put the guppies in one tank, the tetra or they're in one bucket, the tetras in one bucket, and, uh, just drop your sponge filter into one of those buckets. Not a big deal. Um, and then you're basically just going to have to go through with a scoop and scoop out the substrate, put it into the new tank and you're kind of off to the races. I know there's a lot of people out there get super stressed out and I don't understand the stories of like putting fish in a bucket and then they die in like a half an hour or something, or like someone's power goes out. And they get super stressed out uh, about it. <clears throat> I always try to remind people that like these fish and stuff are shipped. Um, they ship like they're shipped for like three days in a in a bag like this big around the world, and they and they can handle it. Uh, you know, just put them in a bucket. They'll just hang out down there and wait for you to be done, and then they scoop them out, and put them into the new tank. Uh, don't worry about transferring the water. I know a lot of people think that like aged aquarium water, like there's something special to it, but there realistically isn't. Um, but uh, if you do have a dramatic difference in your pH and stuff like that, uh, from your tap water to your to your tank setup, then I would probably uh, consider keeping the old water so that you could probably dump some of it in there or at least condition it to a point where it's going to match. Uh, so whatever you normally do, just go about that process to, uh, up raise or lower the pH. So you're at the point where you want it to be, uh, and then just get it up and running. Um, taking the sponge filter from that other aquarium, putting it underwater, keeping it going, uh, will keep all the bacteria and everything alive. And then you just drop it in there and it will start to seed the bacteria and get your, uh, uh, cycle going really quickly. Uh, it's surprisingly fast how quickly the bacteria will repopulate a new area if, with a healthy colony uh, introduced. I think the doubling time is 36 hours or something, or I think it doubles in 12 and then it doubles again in 36 hours and whatnot. And the cycle's already running by then anyhow. So uh, I wouldn't be uh, too worried about that. It really is just kind of break it down, move it over and move to the next one, you know. Uh, Vicky just texted me that she's off to work again. Bye, honey. She didn't yell back. But needless to say, I think she's going to be okay at work. Um, but let's see here. Yeah, I just uh, just move the tank over, and I think it'll be pretty good. All right, let's time to go to the Patreon questions because it's that time of year. And I don't know where my little button went. There it is. Um, all right. Dan Squires. Who's first? Yes. Dan Squires is first in the Patreon questions with a quick poll. Uh, what is everyone else's favorite community food or state species if you have a single species tank? Um, I like Sarah's community food. I like um, New Life Spectrum's. 
uh, community food. I like that quite a bit with the garlic and stuff, the Thera A. Um, yeah, I think those are the two that come to mind. Oh, what happened here? Well, I'm over there. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Sorry. I had the... Man, I had the screen set up while I was sitting in a different spot. <laughs> like a dork. Uh, but those would kind of be my favorite ones. Uh, Olympia Shrimp says the Bug Bites and Rapashi. Ooh, I've forgotten about Rapashi. I definitely do the Rapashi for sure. Uh, Alyssa likes Soylent Green and those Hikari Algae Wafers. Those are pretty good. Uh, Kelly likes Bug Bites in general. Daniel Keeping Fish says couldn't possibly stick to one. Mix it up all the time between Flake pellet frozen dried etc uh but has to be said all the fish and shrimp and snails for that matter go craziest for the various types of rapashi Ooh, now that's understandable i get it um yeah i think um it kind of covers the bases i can't really think of any any other kinds of food realistically uh chicken joe chiming in on uh was that Saturday, Sunday? I think it was last Sunday. Uh, we noticed this on our female, and I can never say this right, Venustus. I uh, probably got that wrong. Uh, the other day, not sure if it is a growth or an injury trying to heal or what. We change about 90% of the water in this 55 every three to four days due to our heavy fish load. Uh, we have added salt to see if that will help. No one else been in the tank has anything like that uh any advice would be greatly appreciated um i think the main thing that's going on there is that either <clears throat> so first of all it could be a tumor that could be a thing i'd have to get a little bit closer to see that uh but my guess here is that it's just a wound it it does pretty much look like a wound and you know Looking at the other stocking that is in this tank, it could very easily be a territorial situation where somebody, um, you know, there's a little bit of a fish battle. But if it does continue to get worse, I would consider uh, I would consider um, adding in a little bit uh, to cover for bacteria and things like that because it might be uh, being irritated and whatnot, uh, and see if you can do anything to help them uh, help them heal up. But the, you know, the main consideration would be just to make sure that you're feeding well, uh, keeping clean water and stuff, and that will pretty much heal a lot of things. You know, I think most people would be pretty surprised uh, just at how much just a really good environment, good food and stuff like that will heal up most either injuries or even a lot of ailments that are out there. So if you just having a real healthy environment for your fish, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty fine. Um, you've added a little bit of salt. Um, you know, I don't know, don't know that the salt's really going to do all that much. Uh, it, it will do something, but, uh, I don't know that it's really going to do too much, but it can't really hurt in this, in this instance. Um, so yeah, I would just keep an eye on it and just make sure that there's no bacterial or any kind of infection starts happening. Then, then you could probably treat for some stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Mike Howie chiming in because I was asking last week, what's going on with the ceiling in there? He says this ceiling in regards to the question on the ceiling that Joel asked on Friday, the ceiling in the barn will remain unfinished. The top level is finished. I will use the ceiling to run plumbing for an auto water change system, electrical, airlines, and etc. The picture above is an example of what I'm using the ceiling for. And that makes sense because you got your airline running through here. Um, you do have a water safe box, but it does not look like a water safe outlet or wire because that looks like a 12 AWG wire and uh you're supposed to have gray for a uh, wet environment not to be not to be a stickler or nothing but you might want to get that you don't necessarily have to but i think vince is probably going to freak out once he realizes our local electrician he's might be bugging bro <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> but i would look at I don't know what's going on. My <clears throat> something. In, ugh. I don't know. Allergies or something. Not sure. I've been breathing in a lot of dust and stuff lately, you guys. It's brutal. 
but I get it now. I get why you would leave the ceiling open. That that doesn't make sense to me that that you'd leave the ceiling open because now you can run all your equipment and stuff like that up there, and it'd be up just out of the way. And this is a barn too, so I wouldn't get super stressed out. But I would consider uh, maybe looking into your electrical there, and in regards to making sure that your uh, water safe, water safe environment. We're going to make sure that you got a water safe environment. Uh, Andre Sal said it sent in. I think Joel should grow a mustache. Looks like he could have a pretty badass stash. Uh, perfect first post on here. LOL. I'm going to tell you guys something. I could have an awesome mustache, but it immediately makes me look about 100 years old. And um, so I'm probably not going to go the mustache thing. Uh, at least until I'm a dad for a while. And then I'll probably go mustache just to embarrass my daughter. Right? That seems like a good idea, right? <laughs> how many people out there, uh, how many daughters out there are embarrassed by their weird dads? Because that's how my daughter's probably going to be feeling. Uh, now, Johan is always sending in something I'm pretty jealous of. I, I just don't get it. He's just got... Some crazy, amazing fish. I don't know what this line is. Oh, never mind. You guys can't see that line. That's just me seeing that. <laughs> Let's not have hallucinations on the show, you guys. Um, but he's oh, Johan is always sending in uh, pictures of fish that if he has all these, I'm kind of freaking out a little bit. I want to go to his house. <laughs> Look at all of his tanks. Um, we've got, the uh, uh, again, an amazing fish of the week, the Copella Arnoldi. The Splash Tetra, which, by the way, these Splash Tetras are awesome, man. If you can get them, I would definitely, uh, I would definitely get them if you can. He says, uh, deposits eggs on the underside of objects above the water surface. In the aquarium, male and female swim vertically to the surface, flick their tails, and leap up into the air. This procedure is repeated several, t several times until some hundreds of eggs have been laid. And I just got, like, something in my throat still. I don't know. <clears throat> <clears throat> well, Alyssa, Alyssa, we don't need to talk like that. I mean, come on now. I mean, I get that might be your dad might be embarrassing for that reason, but I mean, really? Um, either way, sorry, sorry, I keep coughing, guys. I got like something going on in my throat. So I'm got phlegmy. I don't know. Uh, this procedure is repeated several times until some hundreds of eggs have been laid. Male then keeps the eggs damp by flicking his tail to spray them with water. Uh, all the fish that I post, I have at the moment, or I have had. Oh, man, now I really want to go to Johan's house. <laughs> um, much appreciated, Johan. Uh, he's definitely got some pretty awesome fish species that he keeps sending in, and uh, I appreciate the contributions. It's, it's fantastic. I love it. Um, and by the way, those splashing tetras are really awesome fish to keep uh, if you ever get the chance. <clears throat> Tyson Dreha, brand new to the Patreon, says, Joel got himself out of the kitchen. I admire that. Joel be a hard worker. I admire that. Well, thank you, Tyson. Um, yes, a lot of hard work done in a, a lot of kitchens for years and years and years. And, um, you know, I, I much appreciate my experience. I'm uh, I'm very happy to no longer be in the kitchen. It, um, you know, maybe someday I'll go back to if, if there's like a good situation to go back to. But um, most kitchen situations are just brutal. You know, you're working uh, late nights, weekends, um, 80, 90 hours a week, stuff like that is normal. Um, the culture there is strange. The pay is really low. And um, yeah, I, I hope to not go back. And I, I definitely would encourage anybody who is unhappy in working in kitchens and stuff like that to continue to stay motivated to, um, uh, to, you know, move on to greener pastures realistically, because, uh, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a, you can transition to other work. You can find other jobs. Uh, a lot of places do, um, consider bringing you in because you are a chef or something like that. Cause they do realize like how hard people do work in kitchens, uh, that they'd be looking forward to have somebody working that hard for them. Um, but remember, you know, be, be patient. Um, keep putting in, um, keep putting in time and, uh, keep, uh, 
pounding around on your feet on your on your you know half a day off or whatever and get your resume out there and you can definitely find um, something else to do and also on top of that Tyson sent in a uh, picture of I don't know what size tank this is looks like a 90 I'm thinking I don't know the layout looks like a 90 might be uh, but beautiful aquascape it's got going on there. It looks uh, fairly new in the green temple and stuff like that growing in. Looks looks awesome. I like it. Uh, although I am a bit of a stickler about clay pots. <laughs> There's so many cool, um, so many cool cave like ceramic cave things and stuff like that out there that you could definitely get into. Uh, the the clay pots always just kind of I don't know what it is. Just a personal pet peeve. Jason Corley says, hello, Mr. Corvus, Jay from Manchester, England. Just want to say that I love the way you, Corey, Jimmy, and all the guests on the Fish Talk show uh, is awesome, mate. Uh, believe Corey is in Peru as well. Loving it. I bet. Uh, yeah, Corey is in uh, Corey is in Peru. So, um, Corey is in Peru right now. Sorry, this chair just freaked out and went back the other way. Um, Corey is in Peru. It sounds like he's having a good time catching fish and stuff. Um, sounds a little bit stressful, a lot of travel and jet lag and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it sounds like he's having a really good time as far as I, as far as I could tell. We normally uh, message each other a lot and uh, it's been kind of weird. Because I haven't been getting messages from Corey all that much. <laughs> Which is odd. Oh, sorry. My phone was going off again because I got this notification from Vicky. And I got to act like I re or I got to tell the phone that I read it. There we go. All right. Stop doing that. Uh, Candy Overhaul's posted about the Corva swag. Everybody needs swag, don't you? You need a cool shirt or something like that. Uh, but Tyson, I'm loving it. This looks like a really healthy situation you got going on there with your tank. I like that. Kyra Wittenauer. 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 Kyra Wittenauer. Chiming in. Says, if a dwarf aquarium lily is severed from its bulb, will the bulb regrow if a new plant... Or uh, will the bulb regrow a new plant... If I let it sit in my tank, uh, my co-op plants arrived early, which isn't a bad thing, but I was camping. So my house sitter had to deal with it, uh, with very little communication between us due to poor cell service. He thought the bulb was a rock. Anyhow, can I salvage my Lily or should I just order a new one? Well, well, here's the deal. I wouldn't want to discourage anybody from ordering new plants, right? Because... You know, I've been sober from drugs and alcohol. Uh, hold on. Let's check the clock. We got to go. You guys, we got to go to the sober clock. We got to check it out here. 1,529 days. Oh, my gatos. That's over four years. Is that four years? Four and a quarter years. Four and a half years. Four something. Let's say four and a third. I've uh, been sober from drugs and alcohol, but I'm wildly addicted to plants and aquariums and plant aquariums, aquarium plants, plants, aquariums, plant, you know, so I wouldn't necessarily turn anybody aside. Um, I wouldn't turn anybody aside from uh, possibly getting some uh, more plants, but... Dwarf lilies go through this a lot. This happens to bulb plants all the time. And I would not be concerned about it. I wouldn't freak out that much. Um, this is going to grow back. So I, I would definitely have some patience with this. Um, the, oftentimes, those things, the, the leaves and stems popping up and coming up, uh, they get broken off a lot. They get eaten by whatever. They get... Uh, um, too much flow and it gets ripped off or something like that. So it wouldn't be super stressed out. I would put it back in the tank and see if it does sprout. But I have also been through the headache, the nightmare of uh, bulbs that don't re-sprout and don't keep growing again or do anything like that. So this could be a 50-50, but personally what I would do is uh, put it back in the tank, make sure it's seated in a good spot, and um, it should re-sprout re and... Um, and uh and and do quite well 
uh, regardless of the damage that it's been through. The, the bulb plants uh, are pretty, I wouldn't say that they're bulletproof, but they're pretty robust and durable and can handle a fair bit. That's for sure. Drew Kassan is asking, just picked up a 120, the five foot model. Um, will a single 48 inch Fuval 3.0 be enough if I plan on it being a planted tank? Yes, personally for a planted tank, yes. Uh, there was video earlier of my 150 that only has one Fluval light over it, the 48 inch version, and it's a five footer. It's a five foot long tank. And uh, I've got the uh, one Fluval 3.0, and I don't know where my link went. I had a link for it, but. It uh, seems to have disappeared, which is kind of the nature of operating this computer tomfoolery I got going on over here. Uh, it just seems kind of things work and then they don't work mysteriously. Hard to say. Uh, Brian Skelly says, I think that's long enough to stop keeping track, bud. Good for you, though. Now, I'm one day at a time and I love keeping track. I'm, I'm racking up. I'm going for the high score, bro. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep, keep on keeping on one day at a time. It goes up one day, one day, one day, one at a time. And yeah, I am going for the record. I don't know what the record is, but I'm going for it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kira, hopefully that helped you out. Um, but yeah, I definitely would not throw that plant out. Um, I would definitely keep it going and keep it rocking. M Howie nine, Mr. Mike, Howe checking in with another one of his his barn updates that is awesome it's getting i'm getting more and more jealous of your fish barn bro i'm just getting more and more jealous because he's got a clownfish rack number one clownfish rack number two like he's busting out multiple multiples of uh clownfish breeding situations uh, he's got a back wall on his fish room that's full of tanks he's got 90 gallon salt water tank that's a tank that's full of a tank because it's a tank um says, lots of things to update in the fish barn this week. Last week, I moved the clownfish tanks out to the barn and set up the central air system. The only fish remaining in the house are some saltwater fish in a 120 plywood tank. Uh, picked up a 90-gallon off Facebook, and we'll move the fish into there. Well, it's definitely an upgrade, too, to be able to, like, move from a plywood tank into a glass tank. That's definitely a, uh, that's definitely a good deal, I think. Um, but... Uh, Kira says, cool, cool. Thanks. I figured, uh, but I'd still order a new one in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just be sure to use my affiliate link if you do, you know, cause, cause you know, that's cool. <laughs> that's very rude of me. I think. Yeah. I mean, you can, if you want, you don't have to, um, Candy Overhaul says, when you're in recovery, every day matters, and you do take it one day at a time. Keeping track is important. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much, uh, you know, I do keep track of, like, the day-to-day, -day, you know, but I do have, like, a, I have a clock. I have a counter that's keeping track for me, uh, but I definitely do celebrate my birthdays. Um, the birthdays are my sober date, you know, um, and... Uh, so I do celebrate those and, uh, I normally go to a meeting on those days and stuff like that and, you know, give a shout out to people and hopefully give some inspiration to a newcomer or something like that. Uh, but it is important to just pay attention, you know, and just do what I got to do one day at a time. Uh, and I don't pay attention that much to tomorrow. I don't pay that much attention to yesterday, except for behaviors that I could correct and try and do better the next time. Uh, you know, I just don't stress out about that other stuff. That's the whole thing about just trying to be the best I can be right now, this moment, and not stress out about things that I, I don't have control over, like the imaginary past or the imaginary future. That just doesn't exist yet. Ooh, Daniel keeping fish has a great point right here. And this has happened to me too. It says, I had one dried up, sorry looking stem sent to me. I thought it would never take, but it ended up being an unstoppable beast. Don't give up. Yeah, it's definitely one of those things about uh, bulb plants is that um, they are able to essentially um, hibernate. You know what I mean? Like they're able to, you know, hibernate as a bulb and then come back next year. Um, so they are quite durable for, um, you know, if they are losing leaves or something goes on or they were in a bad, bad situation. Um, they're, they're quite durable against those things. Vince Grippa coming in, dropping in this, is this thousand watt air pump? 
and 12 inch diffuser big enough for my 10 gallon? I'll answer that question with no. No, it's not. You should go much larger. <laughs> uh, jokes. Had to run power to the pump today for the aerators going in uh, the ponds of a golf course. Ah, that's awesome. These are going into ponds. These are just quite large. Uh, then I was asking them some follow-up questions about what they actually did, what, what electrical did they do, and uh, then it turned out it, it just really wasn't that exciting. So that's why he didn't mention anything about the um, uh, the electrical side of it. He's just getting them wired in and hooked them up, uh, going out on a golf course, which is cool. Uh, I kind of do want one of these pumps someday if I ever am doing a, a, a large fish room. I wonder if this thing would actually just single powered, single handedly power a whole entire uh, fish room just all alone. 54 Punchy says, I have a friend who just slipped up after four years sober after her mentor threw herself in front of a train. It hit her hard, but she's back on track again. Um, that is that is very unfortunate. That is very unfortunate. I, uh, I, I have a friend that threw himself in front of a train um, about, I want to say, eight years ago. Maybe less than that. Uh, seven years ago, I think. Maybe. I'm trying to remember exactly. Six years ago, maybe. 2012? 2011? Something like that. Just walked straight into the train. Um, and I would remind anybody out there, if you are thinking about offing yourself, uh, don't bother doing that. Try to find something outrageous to do instead. Like... Spend all your money on lottery tickets or uh, buy a one-way ticket to Egypt and figure out what it's like to live in Egypt. There's a bunch of stuff you haven't done, and, you know, that's a permanent solution for a temporary problem. It's not a good idea. It's not good. You could do a bunch of outrageous stuff like skydiving. Um, you could become uh, a test pilot for rockets. Um, you could <clears throat> mountain bike down a mountain you could do a bunch of just dangerous stuff that you'd be afraid to do uh so if anybody is thinking about doing that just go that route and uh give it a shot give it a shot and doing something outrageous sign up for the doctorate program uh james lyser chiming in says back in april i saw a patron here who had the most wonderful water sprite yet mine seemed to keep shrinking so i began a test i grew out what I had left in a 10 gallon for two and a half months. Here are the results a day after planting some back in the main aquarium. Water Sprite zero, rainbow fish full. <laughs> oh man. I, I think, All right, man. I'm glad you got a sense of humor about this, but yeah, uh, rainbow fish like to eat some plants. Like they're not there; they don't go hammer town uh, on everything or anything like that. But there are definitely some plants that they want to chew on, nibble on, munch on, whatever, however you want to call it. Um, they will eat it so i i hope that this is i hope that this is problem solved i hope that this this shows that the problem is solved i've never had an issue growing water sprite uh it almost always grows insane for me uh an, an insane mess and then i end up getting rid of it just like um just like guppy grass like i end up like oh man it filled the whole entire tank and you can't even see what's going on in there um it's the same kind of deal with uh water sprite i i end up in, in that same situation uh meat man says i'm delving into co2 i have 150 gallon received a 10 pound full tank but looking for what else i need i know regulator was solenoid but what after that what do you suggest uh i would say look up my reactor videos i have two of those up and i just uh, shot a new reactor video that's a different style of reactor today. So that'll be coming out this weekend. But I do have two other uh, CO2 reactor videos up on like how to put it together. The first one I did was kind of terrible. The last one I did was not so bad. 
the one I did today is probably basically not so bad. So I don't know. I would check those out. But basically, you just need a way to get the CO2 uh, diffused into the water. There's lots of ways to do it. I prefer a reactor because uh, I want less equipment in my tanks. I want to be able to look around in there and not be... Um, staring at the technology when I could just go down to my sump and look at the technology down there and just keep them separate in conjunction, working together, but separate. Um, vexing cat with a $10 super chat with no question on it. Just tipping into the old tip jar. Well, thank you very much. Vexing cat. That is very, very nice of you. I thank you. Um, Yeah, so Meat Man says, watched them last night. I used a canister, not a sump. Yes, the the two other reactors that I've done easily hook up into a into a canister. You just, the out pipe on a canister, not the intake. You want the out, the output, you just plumb them in there. So output goes down towards the bottom. Output goes back up into the tank. So, um that's uh, those are the easiest way I find to do it. If you have a canister or a sump or anything like that, if you hang on back, you do have a little bit of a problem, but you know, hold on a second. Sorry. Goofy thing over there was like about to fall over. Um, Chad Crot says, how do you internet people hope all is well? Did I miss the video? You did miss the video, but we'll probably run back to it. Uh, we'll review it again. Right now we're on the Patreon question parts because all the people that are so generous to chip in on the Patreon, um, I like to take time on Friday and uh, answer their questions. Speaking of the Patreon, we have a brand new patronizer during the show. Um, Kill Michael coming in with the $1 level. Loving it. Kill Michael during the show. Awesome. We also have a brand new Patreon in Drew Casson. Thank you very much. And Wes, wherever Wes is, thank you very much. You went from $1 up to the $11 a month. That's awesome. And you guys, I, I don't know. I just never even thought like anything like this could ever work. But thanks to you guys, like we're almost we're getting to a point where it's like, you know, yeah, I understand a thousand dollars a month. Isn't that much when you, if it's, if it was my only income right now, I would, uh, pr I would be a little bit upset. Um, like I said, I'm working all these extra jobs and stuff. So, um, it, you know, we're not independent yet. Um, but thank you very much. I, if from the bottom of my heart, I, I definitely say thank you to you guys. Um, Sandman, uh, jumped up his pledge. Um, Tyson Dreha coming in $20 a month. That's buck wild. Uh, Jacob coming in a dollar a month. That's awesome too. And I'm losing track of what's going on here. Um, uh, but thank you very much. You guys, I, I wholeheartedly appreciate it. And everybody that's been here a long time, uh, I appreciate you guys too. I just, there's 322 people now helping fund the show. And, uh, to anybody out there that can't afford it, I understand. I wholeheartedly understand. Um, I, I get it, you know, showing up and watching the channel and watching the, watching the videos and hitting the like button and sharing out and stuff like that, that all counts too. And I appreciate that also. Uh, it's all, we're all, we're just going for cumulative effect here and trying to build a, build a community. Andre Saul is asking if I want to post pictures on Patreon, do I need to go up in donation? Nope. At the, the gateway is $1 a month. <laughs> So it's, uh, it's pretty cheap, I think, um, for the amount of content you get. I mean, I do three live streams a week that are, you know, an hour and a half to two hours long. Um, I do edited videos, all that kind of stuff. Um, I think last, last month I uploaded 26. So between live streams and uploaded videos, there was 26 videos. Um, so if you were at a dollar a month, that's, what is that? It's less than four cents an episode. Oh man, <laughs> it just made me rethink my whole deal here. No. Um, yeah. So I, I think, you know, four cents, four cents an episode is a pretty good deal. And by the way, if you, if you think that YouTube matches that, they do not, it's more like, 
one tenth of a cent per view. <laughs> um, you know, I forget what the actual numbers are. I'd have to look them up, but it's it's not that great. But well, actually, it might be four cents a view. Yeah, come to think of it, it might be four cents a view. I don't know. I really don't know off the top of my head. And uh, so I'm just going to stop talking about it because I feel like I'm talking about something uh, I can't remember any of the numbers for and stuff. So we'll move on. Uh, <laughs> Andre Saul says towards the mustache fund. <laughs> With the Swedish crowns. Well, thanks, my man. <laughs> I'm... Maybe someday, maybe someday I'll do the crazy, uh, I'll do the crazy, uh, the mustache. I don't know. I did it a long time ago because I worked for a company that required you to have a mustache. Believe it or not, whatever. It's not a big deal. Uh, I'm no longer there and it was a long time ago. So I grew one and people just thought I was like 15 years older than I actually am. Uh, Enix Sound says, well, I got to get ready for work. Got a busy weekend, but I'll be sure to watch the replay when I have time. Take care. Oh, well, thanks for coming out, Enix. Definitely appreciate it. Our next post from Daniel Keeping Fish is just wanted to share my idea for an alternate alternative background egg crate attached to suction cups with the Nubius Nana Petit glued on. Takes patience. Either either need to spend a lot of money on plants or wait till they grow, uh, then snip off cuttings and place them in a bare spot. But it's going well so far. I worried. The plants on top would shade out the ones below, but it's been five months so far, and they are growing well. This is a great idea. I, I love doing backgrounds with Anubias. It is a great plant to be able to do that because you can always direct your light kind of forward to the front of the tank and whatnot and just allow them to hang out in sort of ambient light. It definitely, um, uh, it definitely will work out kind of best. With the Anubias, because they're really easy to clean off, like moss walls and rekia walls and stuff like that are super, they just get jam-packed with detritus and um, get really gunked up with like poop and stuff like that. And it's just terrible. Um, and it's wildly stressful. <laughs> it becomes wildly stressful um, trying to deal with a moss wall or whatnot. And it just gets kind of funky. But this is a great idea. I really like what you're doing. And it's awesome to see the progress on this. It looks fantastic so far. Um, keep going on it and let that thing fill in all the way. And then tell me to uh, send me your address so I can come over and tour your fish room. I got I got to do more of those, you guys. It's so much fun. Uh, I love doing the fish room tours. And I think you guys like watching the fish room tours, too. Luke Locken here chiming in. Hey, Joel, plant help needed. This tank has been set up since late June. I had some white stuff slime starting to grow on some Mopani wood, but everything I read said it was normal for new wood and new tank. But now some of my plants have some white stuff growing on them should i be concerned or is it normal for a new tank no fish are in here only live plants i have an aqua clear 50 and a sponge filter on it um yes so that white film on your new driftwood actually is a type of fungus as part of the conversion um once you soak the driftwood the first time it will probably grow that white funk on there uh, but shrimp plants whatever will eat it or it will just go away on its own it will cycle out uh and that's not a big deal but um this plant right here this anubius's roots are completely stifled in this sand so what i would recommend with this anubius to try and nurse it back to health because it's going to die pretty soon uh you start to see a little bit of stem rot here where the uh, uh where the stems are are attaching I would get it out of this sand and uh, let it float around for a while because it is uh, definitely has a suffocated root ball. This sand is probably a little bit too coarse for it and probably doesn't have that much nutrient in there for it. So I would consider floating this Anubias for a while, allow it to column feed from the water um, because that's mainly how Anubias gets a lot of their um, uh, nutrients and, and things in order to grow. Uh, but I... Low expectations on this plant right here um, does not look that great. Yeah, and here's the white, here's the white fungus right here on the driftwood itself. This uh, this fungus, do not worry about this fungus. Everybody out there, 
in uh, in uh, internet land. Don't worry about this fungus. It's natural. It's part of the deal. Um, it will just either go away or, like I said, it's food for shrimp or fish. Uh, a lot of fish will eat it and stuff like that. Um, but I am worried about the uh, the rot on this Anubius. And it could be Anubius rot. I'm not sure. Um, they look very similar to what's going on here. And I would uh, be a little bit concerned. But my recommendation would be to float this plant for a little while and um, see if you can't come up with something um, a little bit a little bit better than that. I like being on the video while I talk about what's going on. So I want to say a special thanks to everyone who contributed via the Patreon um, questions and just being a patron patronizer, being one of the oceaneers and uh, kicking like chicken and also uh, chiming in on the uh, on the polls on uh, the poll on Patreon and the poll on uh, YouTube. There's two polls out there right now. Feel free to chime in on those and let me know what you think. I will be making a decision by Monday. I'm not really going to make a decision right now because I feel like I'm making a rash decision. And I definitely want to talk more at length with Vicky about it if that's what she wants to do um, and kind of go from there. Because we haven't talked about possibly doing the uh, the 60-gallon cube and see if that works. But that might work out for our situation. We shall see. Um, all right. Well, we're back to the video section. We'll let the video play in the background. If anybody has any questions for me directly today, feel free to throw them into the chat and I'll answer them quick fire as much as possible. So if you had a question earlier and I didn't notice it, go scrolling by or anything like that, now's the time to go ahead and throw it in there because we've got about, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes before I feel like i don't know i feel like i'm uh i kind of feel like i'm i don't know i'm just like super tired or something i don't know what's wrong with me scottish aquatic says he can't wait for the future neither can i um yeah we definitely need to do a project at some point in time we definitely do need to do a project um uh, as you guys know, Jimmy posted a video touring Scottish Aquatics, and I may or may not have been there. <laughs> uh, so I would look forward to that video coming out fairly soon. I was hoping to get it out by this weekend. We shall see. Um, I would love it. Uh, if, I, if I can get it done, I'd, I'd love to get it out. Uh, Kira Witt says, what do you think about beta sorority tanks? Um, I think beta sorority tanks, I have done them myself in the past, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. You really do need to pay attention to um, what is going on behaviorally in these tanks, because sometimes you'll have 10 females that are just chill, and one is super mean, uh, and just start in battles, you know what I mean? Um, they definitely um, just start battles and stuff like that, and start getting all crazy, Um for sure but it's definitely something that you can do uh you just have to really give it a lot of observation time just to make sure things are are, are going legit in there and they're not going to be um getting beat up uh barbara jackson says hope you're not getting the bob sickness no uh i already as you guys remember i had the germany sickness when i got back i had the same thing that Corey did um although i didn't <clears throat> excuse me I didn't miss any work. <laughs> I'm just, I think uh, I had to close the door and everything. I think it's just getting stuffy and warm in here because um, I don't have the air turned on or anything. Hold on. Oh, no. Yeah, that's why the vent is no longer in the window. I had the vent in the window. Now maybe I'm just falling asleep because it's getting warm in here. I'm just breathing up all the air, you guys. There's so much talking is you guys gonna go. Wait, what? Um, uh, Tony Franzen is asking, what plants would you do in a 60 liter Denerla cube? Uh, I don't know. Tell Denerla to send me one and um, then I'd be able to show you. Uh, personally, right now, I would probably do a moonscape with uh, a black substrate moonscape with some uh with some really cool wood and stuff like that in it and what plants would i do hmm 
I mean, you guys know that I have collectoritis of plants, so probably pretty varied. I probably would be pretty varied. Um, <laughs> my weekend life says, sorry, babe, I took the exhaust out of the window when I left for work yesterday. Yeah, it makes sense. It's not, it's not a worry. I just, there's no way I can do, put it back in during the show. <laughs> <laughs> but um let's see here wallet tune says yo i had an issue with my 200 gallon display i filled it up 60 percent of the way and noticed the front panel bowing a lot there's no bracing on the tank should i replace the front panel or brace the tank um depends on what type of tank it is if it's glass that would be a real problem um acrylic will bow a little bit but it's not great for acrylic to be bowing either. Um, was it full before? Uh, I'm wondering what the differences are. Is something different? Um, bowing is typically a bad idea. Um, if it's glass, I would for sure brace it. Uh, if it's acrylic, I would almost consider replacing it and finding one with a top on it. Um, the 120 that we got has a nice big opening in it, but it definitely has a top Um a top panel on it it no people no longer do the tiny openings in the top because somebody finally did the math and realized that oh you know this lateral piece that's flat like this with a big opening in it actually is structurally really strong um, and just having a tiny hole doesn't really increase the the, the structure's strength all that much so um um Oh, <laughs> there was a sighting of me in that fish room tour. Yeah, I've, I've been there. <laughs> oh, and Vicky has shared the baby registry. Anybody that's super, um, anybody that's super excited, um, oops, what did I do? Okay, anybody that's super excited to help out with our baby registry, here it is. I, for whatever reason, I can never find the link to it, uh, but there's the link to our baby registry. If that's something that you guys want to chip in on, uh, it looks like there's <laughs> nipple moisture and uh, towels and uh, body lotion and some soap and uh, all that diapers, I think, and there's just so much on here. There's so much on here, you guys. Uh, a man crow diaper bag, backpack organizer, baby backpack for mom. Uh, I don't know. There's a bunch of stuff on our baby registry. That's awesome. Uh, if you're somebody that wants to help out with our brand new baby that's coming in the next couple months, uh, if that's something that you want to do, check that out. And, um, you know, no pressure, no pressure. It's, it's not even, a, I'm not even making a sale. I'm just saying we got a baby registry. If that's something you want to do, I got to go try and find some Mr. Browns today. It's just got to happen. I got to run to the uh, bank anyhow. So I'm going to swing by the uh, the store and see if I can grab some on the way. Uh, Cor <laughs> Corey Boy Aquatics says, where is the mustache picture? Uh, I don't know. I have a bunch of pictures of me with a mustache, but I, I don't know where they are. Um, you know, they're somewhere. I don't know where. Let's see. While the tunis is not full before, the front panel was made with two 7 millimeter sheets. They were like epoxy together or something. Um, Wallet, I would worry about that tank. With it bowing like that and it never being full before, like it's never been tested and it's bowing like crazy, I would probably not fill it myself. I would probably drain it and just use it as a paludarium or something like that that only needs a couple of inches of water. I'm sorry to say it, but that's what I would do. Uh, I would be really worried about having a blowout and there 200 gallons of water on the ground is a surprising amount of water. It really is. Um, you know, do, 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 do. Let me see what's going on here. Uh, Lex Nibbles is asking, I have a planted 20 long with generic black gravel substrate. Should I change to fluval stratum for cherry shrimp? I'm getting next week. Um, uh, personally, no, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If you have a, uh, mature tank that is doing quite well, that's going to be the real benefit for your, uh, cherry shrimp. If you got cherry shrimp coming in a mature tank 
any kind of shrimp, as a matter of fact, a mature tank is the best thing that you could do for them. Uh, even if the pH is off by a little bit, even if the GH is off a little bit, even if the KH is off a little bit, the most important thing would be a nice, mature, fully cycled, lots of um, available food for them. Uh, most of the food that they eat, we can't really see. The biofilm and stuff like that is the mainstay of what they like to eat. So a mature cycled tank is going to be the best thing that you can do. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be the best thing that you can do uh, to maintain a healthy tank. Brian Griffith says supposed to be in the 90s in Tacoma next week. Um, that's probably, yeah, that's probably true. It was in the 90s earlier this week, last weekend. Um, so I wouldn't think it's really that crazy. Uh, November 15th is when our baby is, uh, our baby is due. So when I get back, uh, in October, uh, I won't be going really, I won't be doing any, any, um, any travel or anything like that through December, January, February, that kind of stuff. Uh, I won't be heading out anywhere. So, um, probably expect a, a lot of, uh, fish tank videos and stuff like that from yours truly of me, uh, you know, wandering around with the baby on my head, uh, trying to aquascape at the same time. Right. <laughs> um, we'll do, we'll do a bunch of unboxings together too. Try to get my infant to open boxes. <laughs> Um, Derek Reynolds says, what do you suggest to paint the back of glass tanks? I was thinking Plasti Dip. Boom, Derek Reynolds, you got it. Uh, I use Flexi Seal, which is very similar to Plasti Dip. Um, the Flexi Seal stuff is just available. Plasti Dip is available also. I think they're pretty much the exact same product, basically. The paint on kind. Um, I don't use the spray anymore. The spray seems to be a waste of money. So I would get the roll on kind. You just use a sponge brush. Um, just whatever fine finish roller, tiny one you could find, uh, will be fine. Ah, my back, I have an itch. Uh, but yeah, Plasti Dip or, uh, Flex Seal, same basic stuff. That's what I use, uh, especially on glass tanks for sure, because you can always peel it off and change it to a different color if you want. You know, you could do it blue one week and red the next week and brown the week after if you want, um. Uh, Personally, I'm, I've been trying to start experimenting with um, gray backgrounds is kind of one of the things that I'm becoming interested in. Uh, and I'm trying to redo a tank right now that I'd be able to do gray in. But I can't really get the uh, Flex Seal to mix to the exact gray that I want. It keeps drying out weird. So, uh, But I really hope to be uh, messing with a gray background fairly soon because that kind of is intriguing me. And I do have a tank that uh, I can do that with. So. That's one thing I definitely am trying to, to get rolling on. And we'll see if that happens, when that happens, or if it's going to happen. Who knows? We just never know out here in the streets. Wait, am I in the streets? No, I'm not in the streets. What am I talking about? <sighs> never mind, guys. I'm just being weird. I'm just being weird right now. Uh, but yeah, Plasti Dip or Flexi Seal is kind of the best thing I can I can advise for anybody to use. Um Andre Saul says, I'm up with my two and a half week old son, Harry, so his mommy can get some much needed sleep. Ah, look at that. That is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. Being a dad, doing dad stuff, maybe, maybe considering growing a mustache. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here, bros. Uh, Emily Fosbear says, isn't there white flexi seal also? Uh, weird they wouldn't mix well. Oh, yeah, I've been mixing the white and black together to try and make gray. But I think they have gray at the store, so I might end up like going to get gray uh, and just try it out that way. I have the, I have white and I have black, so mix them together, but it keeps drying out weird. So, you know, um, let's see. Trying to catch up with the chat. Uh, Dan Squire says, I'm dreaming of an exhausted Christmas. <laughs> Um, bu -ba -da -ba 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 let's see here, I'm trying to catch up. Uh, I'm not really seeing if I missed any real questions. Um, uh, Vicky says we do have a 120 to escape. Will it be salt water? Will it be fresh water? We're going to figure that out. I have had an idea and we didn't talk about it while you're here, but we'll talk about it later, Vicky. 
Um, never had a problem posting a pic with the app. Wait, what happened? Oh, Steve, uh, if you're having a problem posting to the Patreon uh, a picture, apparently you have to use the desktop. Uh, use the app in the desktop. That apparently is the best way to do it, from what I've heard. Um, I never try to post that way, but that's what I've heard from people. Uh, Brandon Skelly says, hoping to learn planet tanks. That's why I'm here. Yeah, uh, it's definitely uh, worth learning. Um, good substrate, good light, good water. You're ready to roll. It's a, that's the easiest way to explain it. Uh, get something good like EcoComplete, Fluval Stratum, um, Fluorite has some great stuff. Um, ADA, Aqua Design Amano has uh, Amazonia or something. Pick a, pick a good substrate that's going to give you a good start. Get some good lights and then go from there. Get some good filtration uh, and maybe someday add some CO2 if you want, whatnot. Uh, just get the box, get the substrate, get a light on it, and get some water in there and start experimenting with what you're doing. That would be my best advice. Just get that rolling. Go on Craigslist, find a cheap tank. It's probably going to come with some filters, stuff like that. Not a big issue. There's never anything to, if somebody's getting started into Planet Tanks, there's never a specific tank, there's never a fancy tank. None of that stuff. Just get something off of Craigslist and get going. Um, and then eventually, you know, after a certain amount of time, you can consider uh, some some of the things that you've done and then whether or not you want to um, uh, invest more money in it or not. Let's see. Daniel's Fish Keeping's got to roll because it's 1230 there. Uh, we'll watch the rest later. Thanks, Joel and Admin. Night, everybody. Uh, oh, Andre Saul. It's his birthday right after midnight. Digging that. Um, oh, no. None said thing. You said hi one time, and I was driving out, and I couldn't text back, so hi back. Oh, one more thing. He said hi one time, and I was driving, and I couldn't text back. Yeah, don't text while you're driving. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no worries. I'm, I'm, I'm rarely am I upset. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, somebody came in at the 10,000 level on Patreon. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we got people posting that are going to be answered next week, which is going to be great. Uh, but it looks like a happy Friday. It looks like the questions coming in have slowly wound down. Uh, Hans Hartman's asking, what is a good plant for an indoor bog filter? Um, Pogostem installatus octopus grows out of the water. Awesome. That works great. Um, any kind of duckweed, water lettuce, any of that stuff for sure. Crips aren't that good. Anubius isn't that good. Um, water Sprite. Water Sprite is fantastic for a bog filter. Um, as we were talking about Water Sprite earlier, uh, there isn't any Anubius really. Um, there are some Ludwigias that do fairly well. Um there are some Ludwigias that do fairly well in, in uh, a bog, uh, if, if you can get them immersed or not. Um, guppy grass will actually do pretty well. I'm trying to think. Yeah, anything that's rapid growing like that um, will do pretty well for you. Those, those will all work pretty well. But the Pogostemon, I would highly recommend. Um, that works awesome in, in as a bog filter. Let's see here. Steve Horton says, so my girl doesn't know, but I'm shopping for a 90 to do a sump on. Um, well, always have full disclosure with your spouse. Always, always have, I, I, I can't endorse that. I mean, I can endorse shopping, but don't do any, don't do any buying without your spouse involved. They might, they might lose their, their mind. I mean, I do buy some stuff without telling Vicky, but that's normally like a computer part or a camera part or something that I was already getting, which of which today I'm super excited because I got a, uh, I got a, okay. So if you guys use my Amazon link, right? The Amazon portal to go to Amazon and buy stuff. It doesn't really matter what you buy or where you buy it from. Somebody was asking about that the other day. Um, somebody was asking about that, um, the other day in regards to, um, 
I think they were in Germany. Yes, in Germany, France, Spain, Japan, Australia, and somewhere else. Um, it's all good. There are some other select countries out there where it's not good, but basically there are a bunch that are all good. Um, and uh, yes, it does do give credit for that. And I got the I got the gift card in the mail that. Um, which, by the way, it is income, and it does get taxed at the end of the year. So I do lose forty percent of it, um, and then I get, I get like nine percent of that back or something on my return if I chipped in too much. Uh, but yes, it's taxes, taxes income, and uh, I don't know, I don't know how long it had been since I got one, but it was sixty-two dollars, which you know, it's not a ton of money or anything like that, but it. Um, it paid for the other part of the camera cage, which is coming today, which is the handle, which I'm super excited for, and some aquascaping um, tidbits that I'm going to be needing to show you guys some cool stuff, some cool McCool stuff, which I think will be helpful to you guys. Um, wow, our baby registry, like nobody's bought anything from our baby registry yet. Somebody's going to have to. I'm going to have to send this to my mom. <laughs> guess grandma's going crazy this is my mom's first grandkid can you believe that i think she turned 800 last week i think i think she turned 800 i'm not sure uh, and this will be her first grandbaby she's pretty excited um oops ah there we go Corey Boy says, sorry, I taken the time out of my day to text or write you to sit back when I was driving and I'm the nut job, really. Thanks. Corey Boy, everything's cool. I don't know. Oh, just don't text and drive. I think that's all people are saying. Just don't text and drive. Like, it's dangerous. <laughs> like, it is super dangerous. I've seen tons of people like texting and driving and they crash. Um, I spend a lot of time on the freeway and I see accidents all the time and I listen to NPR because I'm a dork, and uh, they give me the updates on the on the traffic on there all the time. That like, yeah, another crash. Uh, Bald and dangerous says not really shouldn't be done on a live stream, but apologize to Joel. What happened? That's how it's done. What? What is going on here? Now I'm confused. All right, I'm scrolling back because now I'm intrigued. What is going on here? Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 Oh. Well, that just sounds like that just sounds like a uh, a misunderstanding. Okay. That just sounds like a misunderstanding because everybody's typing stuff out. I think if everybody was talking in person, I think if everybody was talking in person, like the inflection would be there, you know, it's difficult to read like people's comments sometimes, especially like how quick the chat goes by and stuff like that. And people are like rushed to try and put stuff in that happens sometimes just sounds like a minor confusion, disagreement, confusion. I think it was more confusion than anything. Um, so, okay. Everybody's cool. Everybody's chill. Um, next fish room says no name calling in the fish fam. Good people. Come on now. Um, yeah, that's, you know, we don't need the name calling. We don't need any of that stuff. I was like, I was reading a post earlier about a guy who, um, had posted a video and essentially like he was criticized. I wouldn't even say that he was criticizing. He was just, it was just like an opinion of like a really big YouTuber channel, um, and the direction that it's gone. And he posted up, he'd gotten more than uh, 60 death threats because he had posted a video of being like, I'm not a fan of this channel anymore because of these reasons, which were all valid reasons. It was like things that were actually going on on there. And um, he gotten like 60 death threats, which is crazy. Like, okay, you're a fan of that other channel. Like, why are you going to tell people like, okay, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know. I feel like our community here is pretty good. Um, uh, 
Um, and, uh, you know, it's easy to have a dialogue. It's like me talking about, uh, like I mentioned, let's just be able to talk about politics the other day. And a bunch of people started yelling at me about, if I was going to listen to politics, I'd go to a politics channel. You know, and I was like, all I said was, is let's be open-minded and be able to have conversations about politics, right? And yet a bunch of people got super mad at me. I, th I think a lot of that has to do with just the fact that um, it's confusing and difficult to like read what people are typing when they're typing quickly. Uh, but, you know, either way. Uh, Kiwi Mamo says, gotta go, folks. We'll finish watching later. Oh, and if I missed it, when is little Michael Olivia due? Uh, November 15th is when she's due. So um, will she come through? I don't know. We shall see. SoCal Killy is here. What's up, SoCal Killy and Fish Tropic with a thumbs up. What's up, dude? Uh, good to see everybody here. Hope everybody's going to have a fantastic Friday. I got to hit the bank, which means I got to end the show 10 minutes early. Sorry, guys. That's just kind of how it goes. I got to make it into the bank because they have bankers time. Uh, and that's just how it goes. 54 Punchy says, politics and op open minds don't go together. Uh, I'm saying that we do have to get open minds about politics because if we can't have a conversation about politics, what ends up happening is all those people show up after the laws and stuff get passed, and they're all pissed about it because they didn't want to talk about it beforehand, right? You know, it's like, oh, Wait a minute. You what happened? Somebody voted on something. I'm I'm pissed about the thing that got voted on. And then they show up later and they're like, "I'm I'm super mad now." And it's like, "Well, where were you when we were talking about this for 6 months leading up to it?" It's like, "Well, I don't I don't talk politics." Well, yeah, but you showed up now after the fact. So, I I think that's you know, and I think honestly like the powers that be that want to hold down all of us regular folks um that's what they want. They want people to not engage. And if if there was a way that I could relate it to you, it would be like this. How many people out there think it's inappropriate to talk with your coworkers about how much money you make? Right? That's very commonplace in this day and age that people think you just don't do that. But... Who is it that came up with that rule? Do you think it's the workers that came up with that rule? Do you think it was the workers that decided, hey, none of us should discuss how much money we make because I might be offended? I think realistically that was a rule that somebody at the top came up with because the last thing you want to do is have all the people that are working there know how much everybody else is making because oftentimes what happens somebody who works at a place for five ten years and has very, had very minimal pay increases by the time that rolls around like 10 years later somebody who'd been working there 40 50 hours a week is only making like 19 bucks an hour and meanwhile the new hire guys making 26 bucks an hour who's been working there for three months but guess what? No one should talk about how much money anybody makes, right? You know, I think where that came from is the top. I think that came from the top down, and it definitely didn't come up. Um, uh, it definitely didn't come from the people at the bottom being paid less than than the other people doing the same job. And Fifty Four Punchy says, "I was asked to not tell my coworkers how much I make because I started out higher." See. Now, there's a perfect example. So they're not even rewarding the people who have worked there for a long time, right? And who does that benefit? Does that benefit the people that work there a long time? Or does that benefit the people cutting the checks? You know? Uh, that really benefits the people cutting the checks. That doesn't benefit the people working there. Uh, Jeff Rose fish keeping with a $20 super chat going baller um, says, sorry, I walked out of the room and I just came back in and I could have swore. I heard you say that you and Vicky are naming the baby Jeffro Olivia. That's awesome. Hashtag fish fam love. <laughs> that is, <coughs> that's next level, bro. <clears throat> That's next level that you threw that out there and a twenty dollars super chat too. <laughs> I gotta figure out how to get in your softball league. That's gotta be the deal, right? 
but I think that's the main reason, uh, like I was talking about earlier, just like that parallel of how they don't want the workers to talk about how much everybody's making uh, is the same reason they don't want everybody at the bottom down here to be able to just have a regular conversation about political things um, like an increase in taxes or a decrease in taxes. Are we going to get a road levy? Are we going to get an education levy? They don't want us to vote. They don't want us to even talk about it. They don't even want us to know what they're doing. That's the whole reason. Um, that's why the electoral college still exists, all that stuff, blah, 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 blah. Um, not to get into any specifics, but just to have an open mind about it because it does affect everybody around, um, you know, and, and just acting like, I'm not going to talk about that isn't going to help anybody. So, um, let's see. Dan Squire says when I did, a, I was earning more than one month, earning more after one month than people had been there for 15 years. Uh, then I left. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, let's see. Alyssa Bentley says there was an Adam ruins everything episode about exactly this. Uh, yeah, it's been going around, uh, in debate for a long, long time. I, I can, I can cite 20 years ago when I was in, um, what's it called? Junior Statesman of America, um, that we would, that we would consider the employment debate because we were, we were, uh, constantly debating about, um, uh, women's, uh, equal pay, basically, um, equal play, e equal pay in, in the workplace, uh, is essentially what that was all about those debates and stuff. But that was one of the citations that we would use on a regular basis. Um, SoCal Killy, he's one top dude. Uh, all right, we got to get to the end here. And uh, thank you, Jeffro, for your monster super chat right at the end. Um, it made me stay for a couple extra minutes, I guess. Uh, Andre Saul with a Swedish crone super chat. Vexing Cat, super generous. Thank you very much. Nick B, master... I got to get better at this. Matt Sarelli. Matt Sarelli. I got to get that in there it's still new to me uh, i'll get it um with the super chat also thank you very much guys you make it all you make it all possible you know what i'm saying so um i hope everybody has a fantastic weekend out there hope uh, i get some some awesome vet edited videos out there hit the subscribe button hit the like button turn on the bell blah 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 all that nonsense if you don't have the bell turned on you won't know when the show is going live if you're not like actively on your phone so um hit all that stuff and uh, have some awesome fish tanks out there and I don't know, get your sleeves wet and all that nonsense. Don't light off any fireworks.